Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the workflow for bringing a character with an actor core motion and smart accessory and physics into 3ds Max. Let's start off by finding the motion and accessory that we want to download from actor core. In this case, we're going to grab this gun prop from this gun collection pack, and if we select related content under the preview window, we'll be presented with a number of gun related motions. I'll add this motion to my cart and continue on to look for a motion from our skateboarding pack. The icon on the top left of the thumbnail indicates that this motion is paired with a smart accessory, in this case a skateboard. If you click on related content here, you'll find a number of accessories that can be paired with the motion. The motion itself comes with a complementary skateboard, but we can also grab this longboard, which comes with a set of different texture options. Once we've purchased them, we can ensure that we have combined download selected in our inventory, and then choose a character, motion, and smart accessory, and download them together. ensuring that our target tool preset is set to 3ds Max, and we download all the texture sets. This will give us our FBX as well as a dedicated folder for the different texture sets. Now in 3ds Max, we can see that I've set the render engine to Arnold, and I'll go ahead and find my FBX in the Auto Setup panel, ensuring that our file content is set to Add. You'll see everything imported in successfully, however, we need to add some lighting to the scene. This is easily done via the Auto Setup plugin under the Look Dev tab. You'll find a number of presets here focusing on head and full body. We can apply a full body lighting template and also select an HDR texture to complement it as well. It's always good to set a safety frame before rendering to prevent objects from going beyond the render area as well. If you go into the material editor, you can use the eyedropper tool to select a specific material, after which you'll be able to see all of the nodes and their connections. Here we can click on the diffuse map and choose one of the textures from those in the texture map collection that we downloaded from ActorCore. We can do the same thing for the skateboard as well, using the same process of dragging in our diffuse texture map from Explorer and linking it up with the proper node. Here you can see the rendered result in Arnold. Next up, let's look at an actor core download that includes multiple motions we can mix together. Here we have a number of different motions we are going to combine, and I also have our trusty pistol. Export from ActorCore the same way as before, and when you import, you can see our import with the first motion and automatically assigned gun accessory here. You can right click on the skeleton in the outliner to open all levels, being sure to check that you don't have any duplicate skeleton names, since Motion Mix does not support data reading of skeletons with the same name. If you find one like this tactical pistol, simply rename them. What you want to do next is select your entire bone hierarchy and go up into animation and save it as an XAF file, which is used specifically for motion mix. This allows motion data to be saved as independent clips. Make sure to define the frame length under segments and select key per frame. We can then import the FBX for our next animation and this time when importing, we can choose Update Animation, which will apply the new animation to the same skeleton. Once again, select the entire skeleton hierarchy and export it to an XAF file, being aware of the frame length. 
Next, we can display all bones and open up the Motion Mix interface. Then click Add Mix Object in order to add the skeleton information. Right click on the newly added skeleton track and import your first XAF file. Then right click to add a new track below that one, which is where you'll want to import the second XAF file. From there, it's a matter of setting the timing between the two clips and using the curve tool for each clip to make the transition smoother. And that's how you combine two separate motions from ActorCore in 3ds Max. Lastly, let's look at how we can transfer an ActorCore motion with a physics simulation over using iClone. In the ActorCore preview window, we don't have any physics simulation available, so let's download our character with this flag, this time choosing iClone as the target application. If you have iClone open, it will automatically detect your new download and ask you to install the items. From there, just bring them into your project. The motion has the flag smart accessory linked to it, so it will be applied automatically when choosing that motion. In iClone, the flag is automatically assigned physics properties, which you can tweak via the parameters in the physics tab. Including a dedicated weight map, which can be used in other software for further customization. In your project settings, ensure that you have Bake Animation enabled under Softcloth. So the simulation will bake a clip to the Vertex Animation channel in the timeline. You can turn off the physics simulation from the toolbar and play back to review the results. Finally, we can export the character to FBX. After that's done, we need to select the flag only and export it as an ABC file, which are used specifically for handling animation simulation data and vertex animation. When we import the original FBX, you'll see no cloth simulation on this flag, so let's make it invisible and import in the ABC file, which will be placed in the same location. You can now see the correct simulated result. To transfer the proper material from the original, we can use the eyedropper tool and simply paste the material over. And that's all there is to it. Thanks to the Auto Setup plugin, the workflow pipeline to 3ds Max is easier than ever. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.